now we're good. So now we're good. Are, they, are these working though? Yeah. So I speak into these. Okay, I see it on that little deal right there. You're good. Whenever you're ready. All right, here we are, guys. Well, I would say welcome back, but welcome. This is the first podcast of many. I think we're going to do this a pretty decent amount. Yeah. This uh, I, I kind of enjoy doing it. We just shooting the breeze, man. Just I don't really know what we're going to call this. What? Hey, Nikki. What are you doing? Um, I don't know what we're going to call this. I don't really know. I thought I thought about maybe keeping it real. Like R E E L, keeping it real. real. Yeah. But I, there's gonna be a lot of stuff on here that I'm not talking about reels and fishing stuff. There's gonna be times I get my little puppy dog up here and say, "What are you doing?" Okay. There's gonna be times where I get my little puppy dog up here. Um, I got a pizza in the oven over there. I'm probably gonna eat a piece of pizza in here in a minute. I don't really care. Um, these are just the facts. These are just facts. This is how we're gonna roll with it. We're not. This is not staged unstaged does that make it real yeah it's it unreal something like that we if you if you're on youtube right now watching leave the comment below and if what do you think the name y'all name it i'm not gonna name it i'm not gonna waste time on it this is a podcast that we're keeping it real on okay so what epi one episode one episode one podcast dc it's 99 degrees outside you can't go outside because the heat index is uh about 120 it's unbelievable unreal how hot yeah. it is yeah it's really hot it's thick yeah it's thick as the bullshit in washington if you keep up if you keep up with the if if you keep up with the youtube channel you you've had covid so you're, yes you're just getting oh. back this okay we're gonna attempt to get this video out on thursday mm-hmm. today's thursday supposedly um so if you look back and watch the COVID video that we just shot, uh, yeah, I'm getting over COVID right now. Still, it was over a month ago. It has kicked my butt. I'm starting to feel a lot better. I'm tired. I went fishing this morning. I woke up at five. The mornings are really tough on me. But right now, it's lunch time, and I'm waiting on this pizza to get done. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's jump right in. Yeah. So. As, as I'm pushing, I, so I pushed DC to do this podcast. What do you want to know? I want to know how you got into fishing. I know a lot of you probably already know it, but I want episode one should be how did you get into fishing? If you could have done something different, like along your path that maybe could have helped out. Yep. And and how could you? How could other people get into that? Fishing? Wasn't that wasn't a? No, that was one of the timeouts. You know, like a oh timeout a soccer. Okay. Oh, they that was a whistle. Things up. That was a referee whistle. Sorry, I didn't. Timeout. This video is brought to y'all by Ding Fishing. I couldn't tell you when these are going to be available, but they are. I've got a couple of them, and uh, they're going to be out here soon. I'm super pumped up about them. So there's a little sneak peek. Mm, okay. All right, I'm going to put these up. Y'all can't keep looking at these. Just kidding. They're going to be available soon. All uh, right. Anyway, um, so you want to know how I got started? Yeah, I want to. I want to know the story of DC getting into fishing, getting to BPT today, beginning to end, and if there's anything in in your path you could have done different or would have done different to maybe get there sooner. Okay. Or... All right. So uh, I get this question a lot. Um, we're probably going to title this video. We're going to put a title in there. How to. Or how I became a professional bass fisherman. Um, This goes way back. All right, I'm going to start from the beginning, guys. Here we go. Long story short, um, when I was about, I don't know, about eight years old. I think I was about eight. I caught my first bass with my brother. It was actually in Clanton, Clanton, Alabama, um, which I grew up there my whole life. I actually caught it in Underneath the Goose Pond Park Bridge, right there off of 31. Uh huh. Right there in the city. In a creek. Not that deep. Yeah. Okay. I caught it on a cream worm, watermelon. Um, anyway, long story short, we move along from there. I fell in love with bass fishing. I fished my first tournament with my brother when I was 12. It was on Lake Mitchell. We ended up winning like 100 bucks. Dude, like 100 bucks is big. Now, we won like 200 bucks. He handed me $100. $100 big when you toy with How old was he at the time? 16. So he was 16. Yeah. He had just turned 16. And we were like hopping in his little evening derbies and stuff. Like this was 
It's getting lit. How does a 12-year-old and a 16-year-old get a boat? My brother was working. He bought a little aluminum boat. Keep in mind, this was a 15. It was a 15-foot aluminum boat with a 25 on it. Okay. It was a Lumacraft. Right. Had 25 on it. So we had a little aluminum boat. Um, anyway, we fished out of that for probably a year and a half. And then my brother ended up getting a champion, a 98 champion, 166. It was 16 footer, had a 90 horsepower force motor on it. So we was in a 16 footer aluminum boat. I mean, not aluminum, but a fiberglass boat then. So anyway, fast forward a long way. We fished a lot of night tournaments, had a lot of fun, fished every Tuesday, Thursday, Friday night on Lake Jordan, Saturday night on Lake Mitchell. Shoot. And then by then, on Sunday, we'd go fishing wherever they were biting the best that week. So we'd go get it. That's what we do. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, long story short, let me fast forward. Graduate high school. Decided if I wanted to go fishing or play baseball. So I chose baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, that's it, you know, and now we're playing at the Braves, playing, playing. Me and Chippers had a good run. Mm-hmm. Tommy John surgery, go back to bass fishing. Me and Randy Travis. Yeah, we've right. stolen a lot of balls. That's right. That's how it went down. Enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, we're getting back to the, to, to the deal. Um, Graduated high school, ended up going to Alabama. I went to University of Alabama. I was on the fishing team there. Um, great experience. Learned a lot. Fished in a lot of places. Fished uh, Arkansas a bunch. I was in that era when Jordan Lee was there. Jordan, Shane Powell, Matt Lee. Mm, bunch of them other boys. Bunch. Of, I fished against a bunch of them guys. So, but at the up? time in Alabama, though, you weren't recruited. That it was like a club thing. It was, was a club. It, it was a club sport. It still is a club sport today, but they've made it big. But they're backed by the university backs them on it. Yes, and now there's sponsorships. There's they didn't have sponsorships in. Mm-hmm. This was in 2010. Really, not that long ago. Eleven years ago. Yeah, that's really not that long. ago. No, it ain't that long ago. But I graduated college in 2012, mm-hmm. so I fished there for three straight years. Um, pizza. Ain't no doubt. Pizza. We're going to take a brief time out. No, we're not even editing this. We're keeping it live. Just let me check it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got him. Oh, I got to let him cool down. All right, here we go. I'm back. I'm back. Pizza is ready. All right. I got to let him cool down. So, uh, what was I talking about? You, you you went to Alabama. It's got backing now. You were in the same areas like uh, JoJo, Matt Lee. All right. So, uh, yes. So, there's now uh, sponsorships. There, It's a big deal now. And I, uh, oh, goodness. Sorry. I, I, I had COVID. I got to catch my breath. So, uh I graduated in 2012. Mm-hmm. Move along from there. Um, I fished locally. Okay, I fished locally around the Coosa River, uh, Lake Jordan, Lake Mitchell, Lay Lake, Logan Martin, Alabama River, for until 2015. No, I, let me rewind to 2014. Yeah. Okay. Hang on, back up. Did you? How how was fishing in college though? Did you do well in college? Did you? Uh, yes, you, I done I done well in college. You were one of the Carhartt guys, yeah. like like JoJo. Well, right? what what we did, okay? Here's it, it was a club sport. I ended up winning Angler of the Year for three years in a row while I was mm-hmm. there. Every year I got Angler of the Year, <clears throat> and when you do that, you had to finish in the top two to qualify to go fish the national championships. The regionals, the FLW stuff, the bass stuff, Boat US, and when you finish high enough, you're that guy that goes. 
Mm-hmm. The school comps you. It pays for all your room, pays for your gas there. And it was like a free ride. Yeah. It really was. When I left, basically, I mean, I think they got a lot of us food. I mean, they paid for a majority of all of it. Mm-hmm. Entry fees, everything. And, uh, you know, we had school sponsors also. We had team sponsors. Um, AFCO was, I, I, in college, AFCO was one of our sponsors, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I can't think of a bunch of the other ones we had. Well, we had school sponsors. So uh, it was it was a big deal then. It's still like, it's a huge deal now. But it did really, really good. And my biggest thing that I enjoyed about college fishing was the experience and learning different lakes. Okay. I went to Lake Dardanelle. I'm going to name some lakes I went to in college. Dardanelle, Lake Okeechobee, Lake Louisville. I went to Sam Rayburn one time. About every lake in, in Arkansas you can think of because for some reason they always went up there. Uh, Arkansas River, I went to the Tennessee River, I fished Gunnersville, fished Pickwick, I fished uh, Lake Wiley, South Carolina, Beaver Lake, fished a lot of different places. And guess what? We go to those lakes still to this day. Mm-hmm. So I learned them, and I didn't have to go up there and drive and spend my own money. Alabama helped me out with that, and it was a great learning experience. Yeah. So uh, anyway, moving along from college. kind of miss college. It was pretty fun. I still feel like I'm like 21, but I'm 31. As someone who stayed in the house with all of y'all, y'all act like you're still 21. I'm I'm an OG. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, all right, moving along. Sorry, again, I, I, I'm getting over COVID. It's hard for me to talk and breathe. So, um, I graduated college 2012 with a marketing degree, marketing slash business degree. Um, I'm, I fished for two years around the house, just locally. Fished airport marine trails. Um, any tournament I could get in, man, I was there. Because that was my main source of income. That's all that I did not have a normal job. I didn't really want one because I wanted the time to go and practice. I wanted to go fish. I I, I had to go do that. So uh, whatever I won was strictly like, hey, here's what you get to live off of. It'll teach you. I don't know what that is. It's a gnat. <laughs> Sorry, I'm over <laughs> slapping you in the face. Uh, anyway, so that will teach you. How to become a better fisherman, knowing that you got to go and catch them. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, moving along from there, 2014, I fished my first bass open in Florida. Fished in Florida, I fished Lake Toho. Finished one pound out of the money, lost a couple fish. I finished 45th place, I think, 45th, 40, I don't really know. I was like right there to getting paid Mm -hmm. and getting my money back. Well, guess what? I went broke. And when I say broke, broke, broke. Like, didn't have 20 bucks. Like, broke. Not getting checks. Not, I don't have a credit card from, from my mom, my dad, nothing. Like, I'm broke. I didn't have no money to pay for my boat payment. I'm driving a hand-me-down truck. It was bad. And <clears throat> for some reason... I think everything happens for a purpose. Uh, that spring, it was like one of those El Nino springs or winters to where it rained nonstop. For me, I like fishing up a river. I like fishing current. Well, guess what? That whole spring, it was blowed out and flooded. So I can't go do what I like doing. I don't have an advantage. Mm-hmm. That spring, the fishing was kind of slow. I didn't win a lot of tournaments did decent but when you finish third in one of these local tournaments you win 500 bucks they don't go far yeah you gotta win so uh before i know it man it's june i'm broke still don't have no money it was getting real bad and nobody knows this uh i actually went and applied for academy i went and worked at academy for like a month because i had to get some money somehow some way and i was like dude so i had a buddy of mine down there was like dude just come down here and work i was like okay well, that 
was not a cash cow. <laughs> <laughs> so it was not a cash cow. Academy was not throwing out the cheese. So it, w- it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't really uh, profitable to be working there. So anyway, I changed that. Danny Stevens, uh, I kind of treat him like he's my dad, but Danny called me and said, hey, this is the exact words out of his mouth. He said, get your shit and come on. I said, no, it started with, hey, man. Hey, then, then, said, then, then. Hey, hey, man. That's what he says every time. Hey, man, get your shit and come on. I said, all right, where are we going? So I went to Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I went worked up there for about eight or nine months. I worked uh, construction. He gave me a job. I just did whatever I could, and uh, I saved up some money. I, I then signed up for a open on the Alabama River um, in 2015 in April. I ended up fishing that tournament. I came home. I quit my job before I did. I literally just told him, I said, look, dude, I'm done. Like, I'm going to practice for this tournament. Like, I have to do good in this tournament. This is my chance. Well, crazy how things work. I ended up winning that tournament. I won uh, $50,000. I then had enough money to sign up for the Opens next year in 2016. I fished the Southern Opens. I qualified for the Elite Series. Um, That's when I met Jacob and Mark. And then I fished the Elite Series in 2017, I ended up winning a tournament, my fourth tournament. Why is there a gnat in here? Anyway. Hang on. So, Mark and Jacob, though, they were fishing FLW. And yes. they, they made the leap over at the same time. We all qualify the same year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. so we were at Douglas Lake, right, right the, the tournament we qualified. Mm-hmm. And I walked up to them at a, at a, in a parking lot. I've I've heard their side of the story of this, but go ahead and tell your. Oh yeah, this is funny. Yeah. So we were staying at uh, we were all at the same hotel. Yeah. I didn't know Mark. Clint Davis knew Mark, and I knew Clint Davis. Mm-hmm. So there was like a little bit of connection there, but I've never talked to Mark Daniels in my entire life. So anyway, I walk over there and I'm like, "What's going on, Mark?" He's like, "Oh, DC, what's up, man?" That's what Clint always called me, DC or Connell. Connell yeah. is what he called me. So, Mark kind of knew me, but we had never met. He knew so, of you. Yeah, he yeah. kind of knew of me. So, I went over and I introduced myself. said, what's up, Mark? Well, then Jacob was like two boats down. Mark and Jacob wasn't like best buddies either, but we all kind of walked over together and started just talking. Mm-hmm. I asked Mark for some fishing line. Okay, yeah. Some cigar fishing line. So Mark handed me a 12-pound spool of Tatsu cigar. So I said, man, you the man, man. I appreciate it. And I asked Mark for some hooks, and he didn't have no big hooks, like big treble hooks for like a spoon. So I looked over, and I said, Jacob Wheeler. He's just punk. I walked over, and I said, hey, yo, J-Dub. I just called him J-Dub out of nowhere. I said, J-Dub. He was like, bro, who are you? No clue who I was. I really didn't care. Right. I'll say, hey, man, you got any hooks? I said, you got some big hooks? I said, you got some number twos. And I was going to put them on like a 10XD and a, sp- and a spoon. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he opened his box up. He handed me some, blah, blah, blah. And we no just, idea who you were. No, no clue. Yeah, right. I introduced myself. So, anyway, well, I think he knew my he, name. He probably knew of you. Yeah, so he knew yeah. my name. But less than Mark knew of you. Exactly. Yeah. And and I would I was doing good in the points, so he kind of knew my name, and I was in the points mm-hmm. race. Because I was up there in, like, third or fourth or whatever I was in. Yeah. So, anyway, we talked about fishing for a minute. Well, anyway, the tournament ended, and we were, became good buddies. And, like, no joke. We all qualified for the Elite Series that tournament. Mm-hmm. Okay. When we, I cannot believe this. If I, I think I'm going crazy. No, I'm not. After that tournament, no joke. After that tournament, I told Jacob, I said, he said, I'm going to go to Chickamauga. I said, dude, you want to go? I said, I'm literally like down to go. Let's go. I don't care. I just want to go catch some. Mm hmm. I just met Jacob like three days earlier. And that's where it started. So I went fishing with him. 
It started because you were broke and you needed extra stuff. That's See, that's the way they tell the story. Mark and Jacob will tell the story. Yeah, DC walked up. I didn't even really know the guy. And he's just like, hey, man. Hey, you got any of this? Like, you got some hooks. You got some line? I need some hooks. I need hooks and line. Like, they said, barring, like, I need a boat, reel, and rod, like, they about gave you everything. Like, they were going to give you everything. Hmm? It was like, I, I need this stuff to, to get through this. Hey, you got some gas? Yeah, you're right. I need some gas. Can I, I siphon some gas? You got some gas, yeah. It was kind of It was kind of that deal. Yeah. That's the way they tell the story. Yeah, yeah. So I was, like, bumming off them, and yeah. I did that for, like, two or three years. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, so I go fishing with Jacob. I'm getting off on a tangent. Anyway, I go fishing with Jacob. We go out there. We smash like 28 pounds. Oh, we had a good time. I caught like an 870, and like we were cracking up the whole time. Well, now we're all best friends. Me and yep. Jacob. So, anyway, moving forward, I uh, ended up winning that Elite Series tournament, and then I had an opportunity to go to Major League Fishing. I've, this is my third year on Major League Fishing. Mm-hmm. We just won Red Crest in February, and uh, God is good. He's very blessed, bless me, and I'm very fortunate to be doing what I love to do. Like, it feels like you've been in the tournament scene, at least outside looking in, for a while, because, you know, you were at the start of the, the BPT, I've been fishing professionally you, for five years. Yeah, this really, year is my fifth year. You're really still pretty new at it, like, no, professionally. I'm, yes, five years. That's it. Five years, and I blows my mind I've been doing this for five years, but, like, I mean, God dang, that's crazy. It flies by. It goes mm-hmm. by so fast. But to the tournament scene locally and then fishing, like I'm 31, but I feel like I've been doing this for like 20 years, I swear. Yeah. Like I've, I've literally been, the only thing I've ever studied in my life since I was 15, mm-hmm. for 16 years, all I ever cared about is bass fishing. Yeah. So I turned about 15, 16, and I could drive. Catch me at the pond. So would you say that turning point was the first paycheck? That first tournament when they when they hit you with the money, you were like, no, hang on a minute. I think the biggest no, it wasn't even the money side of it. It's just I loved the competition of it. I just love fishing tournaments. Yeah. I loved it. Night tournaments, I freak I loved it. And tell you what I loved. Y'all know y'all know what I'm talking about. When you go to the weigh in, like to the scales at night in a night tournament or at a day tournament, and it's that suspense. You don't really know what everybody's got. And you know you got a decent bag, or you got you know you got a big bag, and then right before you dump them, mm-hmm. you start getting that little adrenaline rush. I still get it to this day, where it starts, your adrenaline starts rushing, and you're like, all right, what's, what's leading? 16.85. You're like, we got that. 18 pounds. Boom, baby, I got them. Like I'm lit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I love about bass fishing. That's freaking awesome. And you're reeling in fish, and you win money doing it. So that's my story. How I became a professional bass fisherman. It has been a long, hard ride. I promise you that it is not easy. It sounds like that little story sounds like, oh man, we can do that, dude. I have not told y'all about the countless days and hours and rain and cold and sleet and snow and practice hours and just time that i have put into this to to get where i'm at man i mean i still i mean this morning it's 95 degrees i go out there this morning literally just go out there and get a bite and get back in the groove of things you know it's a full-time job so would you have done anything different on your path or are you 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 feel like no because i I would be somewhere else like i feel like that a lot of times on a lot of things i get into i'm Mm -hmm. like yeah, it really sucked, and there's probably an easier way to do it, but the way I did it, I'd be a totally different person. I'm happy with who I am right I now. I wouldn't change a thing that I did. Yeah. I literally would not change nothing because it was all meant to be. Um, me going broke in mm-hmm. 2014 was meant to be. It pushed me harder. It, it made me take things for less granted. I have no idea what that was. Crap was that. I don't know what that was. The bird strike. We had a bird try to fly in the window. No, no, I did have that happen one day. I wouldn't change a thing that I have did. Uh, me going, like I said, me going broke, me doing all that, all the countless hours. I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't change a thing. What would you tell someone trying to get into it? All right, here's my advice for. I get this question all the time. 
how can I become a professional fisherman? I want to become a professional fisherman. High school kids ask me it. Um, college kids, weekend guys. Okay, here is my advice to you. Have a plan, okay? Have a real life plan of how you're going to do this, okay? Don't just say, oh, I want to be a professional. It's a dream. To put that dream in motion, you have to have a plan. It's not going to just fall in your hands. It's not going to fall in your lap, okay? The squeaky wheel gets the grease, okay? Have a plan and and go work toward it, okay? If you got to sit out there and talk this out and say, okay, literally sit down on a piece of paper and say, okay, for me to get professionally, I need to, number one, I need to fish as much as I can. You need to worry about bass fishing, okay? Have the sweat equity of this game. That's what I call it. I treat fishing like a trade, okay? Whether I'm a welder, a painter, a videographer, this is a trade, and you have to perfect every aspect of it. You can't just, or you you can't just, you can't just weld mild steel, okay? You gotta you gotta be able to TIG, you gotta be able to do all of that. You can't just run GoPros. Yeah. You gotta run it all. No, so I, from my side of it, so I don't know if any of y'all even know who I am. I'm, I edit all the videos. B. Everybody yeah. knows B. Yeah. Anyway, so I get a lot of kids that'll come up and go, oh, you're, you edit, how, how should I grow my channel? The, and it's, it's the simplest thing. It's just, you work. That's it. You, you gotta go out there and work. There's no hidden. There's not a there's secret. There's not a it. secret. It's called sweat equity. That's what you call it. You put in the work. You put in, you get it right back out, okay? Um, fish, 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 fish. And you're part of. If you want to be a YouTuber, yeah. film, yep. learn, learn how to edit, learn the little nick snacks gadget, learn every little thing that you can. Try stuff, even if it don't make sense. Boom. It may work. Try it. Yeah. And then that big break may happen. Mm-hmm. Um. So that's the first first thing. Fish as much as you can. Learn as much as you can. If you don't know nothing about deep fishing, go learn it. If you don't, if you don't like fishing with a jerk bait, go throw it. Every little aspect, learn it. Okay. Number two, have a plan financially because it takes a lot of money to do this and a lot of time and effort, and it's a strain. That's the biggest strain. Okay, if I'm a high school kid, what I'm doing is I'm worried about fishing. I'm not worried about sponsors. I'm worried about fishing Mm -hmm. because if I perfect fishing and I'm in high school, I'm ahead of the game with everybody. Okay? Yeah. And then when I get in college, I got the fishing dang game down. Let me start networking a little bit. Mm-hmm. Let me let me network with some of these sponsors. Let me talk to them. They're probably not going to pay me or, or anything like that. But hey, man, you know, I'm gonna get like fifty percent discount. That's a big deal. Let me just kind of get my foot in the door just to help me out just a little bit, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then have a plan for your career wise. That's your choice. If it was me, I would pick two different degrees to go in. If you end up going to college, I went into marketing or business. Is there a degree for like videography and editing? There, there's, there's not necessarily, it depends on what college you go to, okay. but there are courses that you can take, but there's, I mean, there's courses you can take without going to college too. Right. Um, I, if it was me, I would have learned a lot more technology side, technology side, mm-hmm. because I would have started a YouTube or to build my platform or my Instagram or something like that a long time ago. It would have helped me out. It would have helped my brand out. I mean, imagine you being 18, I mean, 17, 16. You're winning tournaments locally. I was winning tournaments locally. Um, me documenting all of that. Me building my brand from way back when. I think I started Instagram in like 2000, like when I was like 24, 25. It was like, that's the new deal nowadays, guys. That's how people get inside and they actually get to know you. Mm-hmm. And then they can keep up with you. Yeah. Fish, so, so basically. It's like a LinkedIn. Yeah. No, it is. It is. It's like a LinkedIn. That's the business side of things. Fishing and your content, that's your LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to do it, so what you're saying is if you want to do it for a living, perfect the fishing first. Yes. Then work on social. 
Because then you've got not only will you have wins under your belt, but then you've got the following. You got the following. You and have. Then you become appealing to sponsors. Yes, you you build your brand. Okay. And uh, you're right. Though, no, a lot of people go out of order with that. Number three, have a plan for your tournaments. Okay. You will not to the end of time. You will not be a professional angler until you catch them at the house. Okay. Keep that in mind. That is not mean. That's not me being. You can't skip that. That is a fundamental building block. Okay. If you're building a house, you have to set the foundation. Okay. Your foundation is your fishing skills. Okay. This is the foundation. Get this as big as you can so you can build a big building. Okay. Foundation. Fishing skills. Move up from there. Have a plan. Whatever you want to do, go to college. If you don't want to go to college, work. Up here, you have to have a plan as far as your tournament schedules. Catch them at the house first. Let's move up to some bigger tournaments. BFLs, weekend series tournaments, just regional stuff. Alabama Bass Trails, stuff like that. All right, I'm ready. I saved up enough money. Let's go fish an open Toyota Series. Put myself in position to take it to another level. Yep. Win one of them. I was very fortunate to win one. It gave me a big boost. It was a career starter. Even if you don't win one, you're getting your name out there. You may finish high in the points. You finish high in the Toyotas, and guess what? You go to the pro circuit. Mm-hmm. Boom, you're fishing professionally. Yep. MLF has had a grassroots approach to it. Same way as bass. I'm not being biased. They have. That's yep. how I came up. Yep. You can't skip the foundation all the way up. That's the plan. It's facts. Yep. Big facts. Yep. <sighs> so there you go. That's okay. So yeah, no. So you start with fishing first. It's that simple. And so the what biggest secret ever. Not and honestly, so I've had people tell me like or ask me like like I know because I'm not gonna hide it. How's my hook set? You took me fishing one time and you said, trash. it is trash. I got to trash. trash. It's not I, trash. Listen, no, no. You, you said, Oof, we got to work on that. Like that. No, I said when I, I told him set the hook and I was like, no, you got to set it. Like, listen, he like set the hook on like a jig. It was kind of like, that's why you're in front of the camera and I'm behind it. I like, don't want to hear it. But anyway, people ask me the same thing. Like, hey, you've been around DC. What do you, what, what's, what's the secret? Like, what's the deal? And I said, the secret is, is he goes fishing on the days that they're not biting. Hmm? That's the secret. You learn. You learn more the days they're not biting on the crappy days than you do the days that they're you're killing them. Hmm? The days you catch 100, you didn't learn nothing. Yeah, you just reeled them in. Yeah. Yeah, oh, man, they're biting. Yep. Like, you found one, like, glory place that's, like, you they're loaded. That's fine. You're not really learning much, though. You yeah. found one good spot. Those days are fun. A ton of fun. Yeah. You getting a waypoint from your buddy is not going to make you a better fisherman. That's a fact. That's a big fact. It's just not. Hey, can you send me some dots? Yeah, you get those like two or three dots, and then you end up fishing them, and everybody finds them, and then once them dots are trash like every other dot is, what's going to separate you? New dots? There's only so many places out there. Yeah. And 90% of my places are trash now because people see me sitting on them. Well, a lot of that's because I tell you we should not be filming on your home pond. We really need to take it away yeah. from the home pond. That's a lot of our fault. I roll by my rap boat. I'm sitting on a really good spot. If I see a boat coming, it's like, woo woo, I'm gone. Have to. Yeah. Anyway, we're getting out on tangent, guys. This is how you become a bass a professional bass fisherman. And keep in mind, you don't have to be a professional bass fisherman. I'm very blessed to do it. I love doing that. But, but like going to a pond... I still enjoy going to a pond and reeling in a two pounder, a six pounder. I enjoy going to ponds. If you got a pond, leave me a comment below. I may slide by your pond and catch all your bass. I'd love to do it. We're working on it. Yeah. We're trying to find trophy ponds. That's the whole goal in this whole deal. The whole underlying deal is like, let me find your pond and catch some bigs. Yep. hundred percent. That's it. So this is episode one. We're, we're already done. Episode that, was, one. that was quick. Like I was starting a podcast. This is what we're doing. Yeah. This is what we've came to. It's too daggum hot outside to go film, and I'm not gonna do it. 
I ain't going to do it. So we're going to try to do these more regular. We're not going to say that they're going to be every week just yet because we've still got to get in we're the We're going to have a special guest. I, yeah, yeah. I'm, I feel like I'm talking to. We're going to have a special guest. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. I'm going to try to get this up on like Spotify, all the places you can get your podcasts. So you can download it to your phones, download it while you're driving in the car, but also YouTube. Um, DC doesn't like saying this stuff, but hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. I'm not too petty to beg for those likes and subscribes. I, just, I don't know why. I don't never say I, that. I, look, I, I grovel for them. Like, give me the likes and subscribes. Give me the likes and subscribes. Like, got to have them. Let me get them. <laughs> I'm yeah, just gonna like, hey, if you want to subscribe, you can. If you don't, if you think it sucks, comment below. Uh, also, I gotta throw this out there. This is on the podcast, and I'm gonna tell y'all. If you honestly do not have a compelling argument about your negative comments, yeah, I don't have time for it. Yeah. I, if you want to be there, negative, there's always one or two knuckles. There's always there. somebody yeah. in the comments. Look. I just spent 30 minutes and didn't get nothing out of this podcast. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It took you 30 minutes to it figure took out you weren't going to get it. You wouldn't go get nothing out of it. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I spent 30 minutes and I enjoyed it. Right. If you didn't enjoy it, hit the dislike button. I don't care if you do or not. It's damn that. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's the whole my, podcast. The whole podcast. I'm in my around. brand new house, but there's a gnat in here and he won't leave me alone. So, anyway, if you got negative comments, Keep them to yourself. Actually, comment below. I don't really care. I ain't gonna hurt. If you I... like this, comment below. If you don't like it, comment below. If you think it's too long, which it probably is, that's fine too. Cause yeah. I'm gonna talk. Yeah. Uh, no, I I enjoyed it. We're gonna do this more. We're gonna have, like you said, special guests. We're gonna try to. I'm gonna try to bring this setup on the road. Um, hopefully, audio and everything was good. Let us know in the comments. Next podcast coming up next. Special guest. Try to get J Dub on here. I was about to say you're, step, you're stepping out. Like you're you're already putting parameters. What have I told you about this? Don't put parameters. I'm getting just the podcast. Have, just let it happen. I don't even have to have these mics. I'll just because, get my you phone. Know what's gonna happen? I literally will just record this on my phone of me and Jacob and Mark just sitting there and be like, hey, we're doing a podcast on my phone. I'll right. send you a Dropbox you this. Right. And we'll just have a black screen on there of us right. just chilling. See, here's what's here's what's gonna happen though. You're gonna say this. We're gonna have J Dub. We're gonna have Mark. We'll have we're gonna have a special guest. It's gonna be my skinny butt over here in the seat. You gonna call him right now? Jimmy's gonna get in the comments book. I thought you said J Dub. I thought J Dub was gonna be over there next. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, he wasn't. <laughs> He's not even gonna answer. He's probably really one in. Says. You're on a podcast right now. I'm on a podcast. You're on a podcast. We're doing a podcast. Say what up to all the podcasters out there. <laughs> what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, I just got off the pod. I was fishing. It's hot. It's 95 degrees right now. And I ran way up one creek. It caught nothing except the rock bass. Then I went way up another creek and I caught two five-inch spotted bass. Dang, you sound like me on Lake Jordan. <laughs> hey, you sound like me on Lake Jordan this morning. Hey, I pull up, throw a jerk bait or a swim bait on something, I'm literally reeling in six inch spotted bass. And I said, yeah, man, it's 95 degrees. I'm sweating. I'm like, you know what? It's time to put this sucker on a trailer. <laughs> it's time to go. I got to go. Well, hey, we're going to close. We're going to close out this podcast. The next podcast, I think we're going to get J Dub. We're going to try to get Mark and maybe Adrian in on there. And hopefully it's going to be at St. Clair, but I just wanted to get call you and say what up and that we're doing yeah. a podcast. And I'm going to let Jacob close out the podcast. You want to close it out for us? All right, y'all. Y'all already know. You know, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Sizzle's always throwing out the heat and giving all the tips away. You need to stop actually giving up all this stuff. For real. I'm giving up all the... all. You know, you, so out on that. We appreciate you guys, as always. Hey. We'll see you on the next one. We out of here.